Yo, what's going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 21 video. Today we are going to be ranking all 30 cards that came out with Stage 2 Team Affinity, giving my opinions on all of them and hopefully giving you guys some direction as to which cards to grind for first. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more. We post a ton of MLB The Show 21 content. And just want to say in the beginning, these are just my opinions. You are more than welcome to disagree with me. I am just trying to give you guys a framework for which cards I think are good and bad, and these are just my initial evaluations of the card and I also want to say in the beginning that I don't really think that defense is very important in the corner infield first base and third base I find a lot of guys that have bronze or common defense play just as well as guys that have gold or diamond defense at those positions so I just wanted to say that specifically because I think that'll come through in some of the rankings and with that being said let's dive right into it I'm gonna be ranking these cards best to worst essentially I'm gonna be starting with S tier the cards that I think are the best then A tier and then B C and D I have six cards rated S tier and seven cards rated a tier so if you combine those two that'll give you like my top 13 of these 30 cards starting off we have what I believe to be the best pitcher released in the entire set of 30 cards this 97 Cliff Lee the card may not jump off at the paper at you especially because he doesn't have high velocity but his per nines are actually pretty good for a Cliff Lee card better than we've had in the past and this screen is the main reason I have him rated S tier look at those pitch control ratings three of his five pitches including his two off-speed pitches have 99 control and even the four seam has 94 and the cutter has 89 combined with his 99 walks per nine rating if you guys are using pinpoint pitching this card is going to be throwing the ball literally wherever you want this is an absurd amount of control for a starting pitcher he's also got incredible speed differential despite the fact that he doesn't throw too hard he's basically got four different speeds and so long story short you guys are going to be dotting people up for days with pinpoint pitching with this card guys literally going to be throwing the ball wherever you want him to that's incredible next up in s tier we got the big thumb Thumper, Jim Tomey. Even though a lot of the best pitchers in the game right now are left-handed, you can't deny how good 119, 125 versus righty is. At the end of the day, you're still going to be facing right-handed pitchers more often, and that's just an absurd in-game power and contact for a first baseman. And 74 contact, 100 power isn't even really that bad against lefties. I also really loved Jim Tomey's card last year. He was one of my fastest prestiges, and I hit over 600 with him in events. I think he's got a really, really good swing, and those hitting stats versus righties are just insane. Third in S tier, we have the first card, which is probably surprising to a lot of you guys. I have 96 Joe Torre. This card, in all honesty, looks incredible to me, especially for you guys who are playing consistently on Hall of Fame and Legend. Maxed out contact versus both sides and 84 power versus right is really good. 62 power versus left leaves a little bit to be desired, but he's still bringing the max contact. And what puts this card over the top for me is the fact that he has catcher as a secondary position. He will still maintain silver defense behind the plate with 80 arm strength, so that's definitely a viable option as a catcher. Also another guy whose swing I really like and who I did really well with last year. I thought his 98 signature series card last year was incredibly underrated. Not your traditional big thumper at the corner infield, but for a contact hitter that can play catcher like this and still bring the power versus right, this card looks really, really good to me. Next in S tier, a card that probably surprised nobody, 93 Sam Huff. This is yet another very well-rounded catcher option with a ton of pop and really good arm strength behind the dish as well. 90 arm 80 blocking will be more than good enough behind the plate and he's bringing over 100 power versus both sides not much to say about this card just really good at basically everything and definitely a top catcher option right now and for the final two cards in s tier we got a couple of short stops the first one is jordan groshans another card that just looks incredibly good especially for a shortstop to be bringing this kind of contact and power gonna have gold defense with 70 speed that's more than good enough at shortstop and also 92 arm strength helps a lot just an incredibly well-rounded card yet again again and this card isn't that much far behind the new Trevor story that just came out he's really only lacking in a little bit of defense and speed so for a free shortstop from team affinity definitely a really good card and the last card in s tier which also might be surprising you guys a lot I have 93 Ronnie Mauricio this is a switch hitting shortstop with great contact and power versus right and still hits lefties decently well you also only need to get him to parallel two to have diamond defense at shortstop which I think is very valuable he also has the ability to play third base much like Jordan Groshan, so this could be an opportunity for you to throw a switch hitter at third base if you don't have Chipper Jones. And I just think the card is really statted well across the board. I think with the pitching meta right now as well, switch hitting is incredibly valuable. Don't be fooled by his 93 overall. Hopefully you guys can understand why I think so highly of this card. Moving on to the seven cards in A tier, we are starting off with 93 Jimmy Fox. If you guys are new this year or you haven't used Jimmy Fox cards in the past, he is renowned throughout the community for having one of the best swings in the game. The 
exit velocities that Jimmy Fox produces year in and year out are insane. This is also kind of a good card to have as a hedge, maybe even on your bench to try to face some of these top tier left-handed starters. I was honestly very close to rating this card in S tier, but I know for some of you guys, the defense is really important and his defense is pretty awful. He does also have catcher secondary, which is really cool if you want another thumper behind the plate, but obviously this guy is going to be a defensive liability at catcher. As far as sluggers though, this card is at the top of the list for cards in this release, man. He's going to crush everything. Next up is 96 Tory Hunter of the Angels, who I have rated as the top outfielder from this release. There truthfully weren't that many good outfielders that actually came out in Team Affinity 2, in my opinion. His stats are good enough versus righties. You would like to see them be a little better, but again, a lot of the good starting pitchers in the game are left-handed right now, so splits are kind of weird. But what I really like about this card is he's more than capable at the dish, and he can also play in the corner outfield or anywhere in the outfield with diamond defense without having to do any parallel progress. He's going to maintain over 90 fielding at any outfield position, which is really valuable. You don't even have to grind with him to get there. And then obviously crushing lefties, this guy's going to be awesome against guys like Leiter and Glavin and Lee. Also from the AL West, we have 95 silver slugger Edgar Martinez. Remember what I said about defense in the corner infield? I like the way this card looks a lot. I've always loved reverse split righties because once again, you're going to be facing righties more often. He's probably good enough against lefties also, but I would probably try to carry a bench bat to platoon this guy with if you do run into one of those top tier left-handed starters. But for most of your at-bats, you're going to be rocking with 121 contact and 96 power, and Edgar Martinez also has a very good swing, so I like this card a lot. Might be a little bit of my A's bias coming through here, but next we have Robert Poisson. This card's basically switch hitting Kenny Lofton that plays diamond defense at shortstop, which is awesome. You also only need parallel one to get him to have diamond defense at second base and third base if you wanted to. I think he's probably a little bit better of a second baseman than a third baseman. And at parallel five, if you want to go that far, he's going to have 99 fielding, 99 reaction, and 98 speed to go along with that switch hitting. Definitely a unique card, the best card of this archetype that has been released in this Team Affinity Stage 2. Getting this kind of speed and defense to go along with the switch hitting is pretty valuable this early on in the year. And to round out A tier, we've got three more pitchers, the first of which is Quinn Priester from the Pirates. This guy's stuff looks nasty. I think he's got good speed differential as well. What I really like about this card as well is the pitch break that he has on his curveball and sinker. They are 97 and 95 respectively. The second pitch curveball with 97 break is definitely valuable and I also think he throws a very good sinker the way it looks on his card. No outlier but good enough per nines and I think it's just a good pitcher card overall. Next we have Edward Cabrera from the Marlins. This guy is basically Sixto Sanchez on steroids and you guys know how much I love Sixto Sanchez in the first team affinity release. The hits per nine and K per nine are very good for a starter. The one knock I have against this card is that he does have outlier on his sinker. I actually think that makes the card a little bit worse. I would have preferred to have a little bit better speed differential between sinker and four seam because with this outlier, they're basically going to be the same speed. However, he's got great break on his first three pitches and that 99 mile an hour primary sinker is going to catch some people off guard online for sure. And the last one we have in A tier is Garrett Crochet. This card maybe could be rated lower in B tier because of his pitch mix. He's basically only got three pitches. However, I think a left-handed starting pitcher with outlier is incredibly unique and valuable. You guys can see he does have outlier one on his four seam, so he's going to be pumping four seamers at 102 miles an hour from the left side. And not only does he throw 102 with his four seamer, but both his slider and changeup have maximum break at 99. The reason I have this guy so highly rated is because he's just one of those cards that could give you an automatic win if you just queue into someone that is completely lost against him. Against really good hitters, you may struggle with the lack of pitches, but overall against most opponents, I think this guy's going to be pumping gas and making it very hard for them. All right, so that was my top 13 in S tier and A tier. Now we're going to get into B, C, and D tiers, and I'm going to take each card a little bit faster, just kind of give a quick synopsis of why I rated them where they are, since I know most of you guys are probably watching the video for the best cards and not the worst cards. First off in B tier is Shane McClanahan. I think the card looks decent on paper. I would have liked to see his curveball be a little bit slower, and then maybe a four-seamer outlier would have been insane for this guy. But no sinker, no outlier, and also pretty poor speed differential between the off speed. I think this guy is just a little bit lower than A tier. Still a good card though for sure. Next we have Roy Oswalt. Amazing pitch repertoire. Really glitchy release. The one knock against this card is 79 hits per nine. That is just way too low compared to other options. His stuff is really nasty and I love pitching with Roy Oswalt cards but just keep in mind with that hits per nine that your opponent's PCIs are going to be very large. 105 walks per nine though. That is amazing control for a starting pitcher. And he's also got 89 plus control on four of his five pitches. And he's got the slow looping Kershaw curveball at 72 miles an hour. Really fun pitch to throw. Honestly, this guy could
could maybe end up being a little higher than B tier, but the hits per nine are really what I'm worried about, but he's going to be a ton of fun to pitch with. Next is Mark Pryor, who honestly could maybe be a little bit lower. We haven't really ever had a Mark Pryor card with this high of an overall, so I kind of want to try him before I rate him too low. But again, the hits per nine, 84, not the greatest. His off speed also involves two curveballs and a changeup, which is not ideal. His slurve, however, does have 99 break and 91 control, so that's pretty unique for him. We'll see how he plays, but I'm pretty pessimistic. Then we have Johnny Bench, another card that could probably be rated a little lower, but I'm holding out hope that they fixed his swing this year. Another guy that can play both catcher and the corner infield. We've had a couple of those already in this ranking. Insane power versus left as well, but historically throughout the years, Johnny Bench's swing has been horrible, so if his swing is still horrible, he'll definitely be lower than B tier. And also 85-68 versus righties is not great at all. Lou Gehrig, I'm kind of weird about this card. I think if you can get him versus a righty, I think he's amazing. 125-84 with as good of a swing that Lou Gehrig has, I'm a huge fan of. But as a corner infield with 72-73 versus left, you're basically required to platoon this guy in my opinion, which makes him not that high on the list, but historically love Lou Gehrig cards. And if you get him against a righty, I think he's going to be very good. And rounding out B tier, we've got a couple of meh outfielders with huge names. First one is Hank Aaron. Honestly, pretty similar to the Tory Hunter card, but just worse in basically everything. He's got worse fielding. He's a little bit slower. I do like that this card can play third base if you want him to, though. I think that makes him a pretty valuable bench bat. I don't know. I could be wrong about this guy. I raked with his 88 card on release. I just think with those hitting stats versus righties, I would like to have a little more from defense and speed. And the same goes for Willie Mays. I kind of would just like to see a little bit more defense and a little bit more speed from a Willie Mays card. I think this card gets a lot better if you can get him to parallel four and get that diamond defense in center field with 82 speed instead of 78. Decently statted at the plate as well, but historically some people have hated Willie Mays swing, so that's why I don't have him rated higher than B tier. And to round out the video, we'll jump into C and D tier. First one in C tier is Brandon Webb, which is kind of disappointing to me. He doesn't throw hard, and basically the only good pitch he throws is his sinker. He's also got very low hits per 9K per 9 for a starter. Then we've got Dante Bichette, who's basically unusable in the field in my opinion. It's, it's going to be really tough with him roaming right field. Obviously a very valuable bench bat and possible platoon option if you don't care about outfield defense that much, but I care about outfield defense a lot, so that's why he's in C tier. Cal Ripken Jr. brings a diamond defense at shortstop, but he's kind of slow, and also his hitting stats for its righties aren't very good. Another card that always seems to have a really slow swing year in and year out as well. Isaac Paredes, basically Jordan Groshans, but without the power and way slower. Just a worse version of a lot of cards we've already seen in the Team Affinity release. And then we have Bryce Terang, who's a lot like Robert Poisson, but just a little bit worse at everything as well. He's slower than Poisson. He has to have parallel five to get diamond defense at second base, and he's also left-handed rather than a switch hitter. And for our last five cards in D tier, the first three are going to be Future Stars pitchers that just look very generic to me on paper. All three of these pitchers have decent per nines, but their pitch repertoire is so basic. We've got Josiah Gray as the first one, Jackson Rutledge as the second one, and Jordan Belazovic as the third one. None of these three pitchers look very good to me at all. And for our last two cards, we've got a couple of left-handed contact hitting outfielders. First one is Tony Gwynn. I love Tony Gwynn a lot on this game, man. His 99 overall is going to be a good card, but this one just isn't. 45 and 48 power is just not good enough. This card would have to have 90 plus fielding and like 85 plus speed for me to consider using him in a starting lineup. It's just really tough to justify using a guy with this low of power when there are so many better options in the outfield. Same goes for Johnny Damon, although Damon has a little bit better power. He's much worse in the field. You basically have to play him in center field to keep silver defense. And overall, just not a very good card in my opinion. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like the video, all that stuff helps me out a ton. And let me know down in the comments section below which one of these cards you're going to go after and add to your starting lineup moving forward. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and I will see you guys in the next one.